Welcome to Muddy's Whitetail Watch. We're into the middle of the first week of November now, and I've got my uh, short sleeve shirt on, but starting tomorrow, looking at the forecast, I'll be back into a sweatshirt, and that's good news. The deer have been moving fairly well though, surprisingly, even with this warmer temperatures. And I think the best hunting when it gets warm, uh, just something to keep in mind, is in the mornings, because you've got more daylight hours of cooler temperatures in the morning on hot days than what you've got in the afternoons. So the mornings have been fairly good and uh, talking to a lot of people and, and uh, you know, like I said, hearing some good reports of, of morning movement. But now it's just really start to get good. Um, I always figure sometime around November 7th is the best period of the whole entire season. November 7th, plus or minus two or three days, that should usually catch uh, when the bucks are really at their peak activity level. And that's what I would call the classic pre-breeding stage. The does, the, the first few does are coming into estrus, but we don't have a lot of does in estrus yet. So that means that those bucks that are all keyed up and ready for the rut don't have as many uh, receptive does to pull them off the market. So they're out there really actively looking. So uh, we've talked about a lot of different strategies so far on, on Whitetail Watch. And one of the things that I haven't really touched on enough, I don't think, is how to find and hunt funnels during the rut. And I think that funnels are almost the, the no-brainer uh, hunting strategy for the rut because as things get going, the bucks are mixing around looking for does, they're traveling, uh, covering ground, and they're going to go through these classic bottlenecks. So let's talk about what they are. Uh, the most common ones that I find around here are cover related. So if you've got like a, a brushy fence line between two blocks of timber, then you'll have the, uh, the deer are gonna trade back and forth between those blocks of timber using that brushy, brushy fence line sort of to conceal their movement. Another one might be uh, where two blocks of timber corner each other, like kitty corner. You know, one is this way and the other one's the opposite direction and they form a bottleneck hourglass shape right where those two corners come together. You know that a buck that's out cruising around looking for does during the day is gonna pass through that little narrow gap uh, because he knows there's gonna be some does better than this block of cover and some does better than this block of cover and he's just you know going from one to the other and taking the path of least resistance and maximum security. Anytime where you get a, a narrow band of cover connecting two larger areas uh, that's going to be a, a go-to point for hunting during the rut, morning or evening. Uh, terrain related funnels are a little bit more common but they can be more subtle and, and harder to find. A uh, classic example here where we hunt are, are creek crossings where you've got a high bank on the S-curve and then you know the other high bank on the other side of the S-curve and in between you've got the gradual banks where the deer cross the creek. So you, even looking at an aerial photo or a topo map you can see those bends in a creek and you can almost uh, count on 100% that there's going to be some type of a rut related buck travel funnel between those two bends. Another one here are, are ditch funnels and uh, ditches in agricultural country are normally formed by runoff from the fields it rolls into the timber, it starts to get deeper and steeper as it runs down through the valley in the timber. And the deer don't cross those usually because they're so deep and so steep that it's really inconvenient for them. So they'll go around them or they'll find the spots where the banks are the most gradual and they'll cross the ditches in those spots. Uh, those are really effective and very common. Uh, saddles, where you've got two hills in a low valley or a low uh, spot in between along the ridge line. Uh, where the deer cross over the top of the ridge. And that's just the path of least resistance there. They, rather than going up over the high point, they just take the, the low point when they cross. Start looking for those things, and next thing you know, you found a whole bunch of them in your hunting area. And those are all good spots during the rut, because when the bucks are cruising, those are the things that they orient to. You don't have to know where they're going or why. All you gotta know is that they are moving, and that they prefer to use these types of, of uh, either train-related or cover-related funnels as they travel. So that's my strategy tip, and, and now is the prime time to sit in those spots. Like I said, morning or evening, uh, these are classic spots for hunting the rut. And as we get into the tail end of the rut, we'll talk about some other strategies more related to food again. But uh, right now they're on their feet, uh, let's just get out and sit in those funnels. Now let's talk about products a little bit, and then I'll uh, let you get back into your tree stand. I've talked a little bit about the Vantage stand already, but I want to talk about some of the other hang-on stands that Muddy makes. There's uh, different uh, styles of stands for every price range. And I use the Outfitter quite a bit, and that's a steel stand, a lower price point stand. 
You know, it's ideal for somebody who wants to hang a stand and maybe doesn't want to move it a lot during the season. Put it up before the season, take it down after the season, You're not having to carry it around a lot. Because they're fairly heavy, they're made out of steel. Um, they're great stands, super, uh, super rugged, super stable, no squeak. Muddy also makes some styles made out of aluminum. These are more expensive, but they're also lighter and easier to carry around. So if you're having to carry the stand in a way, is transporting it into public land, for example, or maybe you're one of these people that does a lot of hang and hunt style of, of, of you know, hunting where you go carry the stand in, put it up, hunt it that afternoon, maybe hunt it for a couple days, pull it down, and then move on to another spot. The aluminum stands are sure nice for that because it takes a lot of the stress and strain off from carrying all that extra weight. So keep that in mind. There's, there's a, a hang on stands for every different purpose and every different price range in the muddy line. Well, that's it for this week. I appreciate you joining me. I'll see you right back here next week for the next episode of Muddy's Whitetail Watch.